Welcome to Woodland Permaculture. I'm Jenny Wood and today is grafting day. So yeah, it's a very exciting day every year when I get to do some grafting and today I'm going to be working really hard to try and correct some things that maybe I did last year. I think I told you in my last video when I was pruning to get ready for my scion exchange that last year I did about a dozen grafts and maybe only two of them took. Those two happen to be on this first front uh, peach tree, and uh, they are doing well, but I'm hoping to get a much better ratio of success this year. So I'm going to be trying some not new techniques in terms of the grafting itself, just some better practices in terms of protecting the grafts and um, making sure that they don't dry out and to do some other things that I've been seeing on some YouTube. Um, I did find a really good YouTube channel that I really like for grafting and I'm gonna try and put a link to it in the description. So I can't remember the name of the guy, but um, it was really good. So first I'm gonna start with my um, stone fruit trio, which I normally like to start with. And if you remember, this is a peach tree. That one in the back is a plum tree and the one on this side on the back is a Flavor King Pluot, and which is my favorite. So I'm going to be planning, um, grafting some peaches, plums, and a pluot onto these trees today. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit, i.e. move the camera in closer so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. Now, please do not take my video as an instructional video because I am not an expert. Uh, that's why I have the link in my description so you can go to an expert to really learn how to do grafting. This is really so you can see what I'm doing and kind of share in my experience and um, hopefully you'll come along with me with my successes in the future. Um, anything else I want to tell you? Yes, first before we get started I have my tools. I've got my scions from the scion exchange. These are just the stone fruit ones. I've got a bunch more in the refrigerator. I've got some electrical tape. Um, the guy in my uh, YouTube videos that I was watching uses electrical tape or something very similar to first tape the uh, graft in place. And then he uses parafilm to wrap it up to keep it from um, uh, drying out. Wraps up the entire graft, the entire scion. So that's what I'm going to try today. Now this is not the best kind of parafilm. Unfortunately, for some reason here in California, the real good parafilm is not legal. So you can't get it here. And I guess I could, you know, buy 20 bucks of it on Etsy or something, but I have not done that. So I have this stuff that I got last year, which I don't like too much, but I'm going to keep putting it to use. And to use it, I need some scotch tape to hold it in place crazy. So anything else? Those are the tools that I'm using. Oh, except for, of course, my handy dandy grafting knife. And I've only got one, uh, I've got one grafting knife that has a couple of blades on it. And that's all I need. And, and uh, I got this last year and I really, really like it. So uh, it's a really good idea to have a very good quality grafting knife. Okay, so let's zoom in a little bit and I'll show you some of my techniques. Okay, here we are at um, some of the branches on my peach tree. I think I'm going to use this one and this one back here. They're right next to each other. For what I have is a, let me see if I can get it, Fatima peaches. So I've got three, no, four of these little scions. These are ones that somebody gave me. Um, a great guy named Constantine in our group just brought us all gifts of a bunch of scions. And these are some of the ones he gave me. So I'm going to do a, these two. Uh, I, I'm going to do a couple of these on these branches. Now, I'm going to be doing a cleft graft, which it's very helpful if you have um, scions that are very similar in size. And so that's what I'm going to try and do. So, okay, so here I've got my... Fatima peach scions, and I'm going to kind of try and match these up. This one is my fattest one, and I think it is pretty close to the size of this one. The rest of them are smaller, but I think, no, nope, that one's too small for that one. Oh, I know. I was going to use this one here. Can you see that one? Yeah. This one right here. Those two are right about the same 
with. So I'm going to try those together. So I'm going to try those two. And I, I've got four in case I make mistakes on the first two. So the first thing I need to do is do a little prune with my pruners, which of course I've cleaned with alcohol to avoid spreading disease. Now I need to make sure I leave enough room to do some grafting that I can cut off these buds, which I don't want to grow. No, no, I think I'm gonna cut right above the buds. I think that, I think that's what I wanna do, like that. So that one's pruned. Did you even see that? Yeah, okay, good, just barely. I'll move the camera in a minute. And then I'm probably gonna cut this one down here. This one right about here to give me room. Or do I want to? I think I want to do this one down lower. Kind of straight. There we go. So now I've done a couple of nice clean cuts on those two little branches. Okay, after I pruned or trimmed those two branches, the next thing I'm going to do is get my graft ready, uh, my scion ready to graft. And so what I do, I'm going to first, I think I'm going to take my pruning shears and cut a, um, a clean end there. And then I use my grafting knife and I'm going to just start doing like this. Oh, I really need gloves. Pull this little guy off of here. There we go. Make this nice and thin. Make a nice smooth thing there. And then on the back, I want to do a short back cut. There we go. So, the thing about grafting that I know is that you have to match up the cambiums, the cambium layer, and I, hopefully you can see where my knife is pointing. The little green line on either side of this cut is where the cambium layer is, and it's right in there. It's very thin, and so they, somewhere in your graft, that has to match up with the same thing on your branch, because that's where the little hormones and all the yummy uh, growing chemicals go through so that it can grow. All of the growing things that tell this branch to grow have to go through the cambium layer. So those have to match up. Okay, so I think this is ready. Let's take a look at the branch. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, oh, it's in an awkward place. So I'm going to come right here and I'm going to just very gently, I'm hitting the camera, rock back and forth down the middle of it. Ooh, see, you got to be careful. I think that's going to be fine. So that you've got a nice split right there. I think you can see that. And then you just put this guy down in there. Now, the, the very nice guy on my videos said this part, the back cut, is probably one of the most important spots where a connection can be made. So let's see if we can gently put that down in there. Now, again, cambium layer needs to be lined up. So, I want this to be right on the edge. It is just a tiny bit more narrow than this. So I'm gonna kind of pull it down to, towards this edge right here. And maybe even slant it just a tiny bit because if you slant it, then there's more likelihood of a connection, you know, if you have like a little diagonal. Okay, I'm gonna give that a try see there a little slanty and now I'm going to get my electrical tape ok 
Okay, I have my stretchy electrical tape. The electrical tape will be very helpful in holding this together, even squeezing it together a little bit. It'll keep the moisture in, but it'll keep excess moisture out. And that should keep that in place really nicely. And now I'm going to get some of my quote unquote parafilm and wrap this scion. All right, very carefully. This part's hard for me. I'm going to use a little piece of scotch tape to hold it in place. I gotta be careful. I don't want to pull too much on it to make it come undone. I think I'm gonna cut a section. Okay, here we go. I'm trying again. I'm gonna wrap the whole thing. Now, I don't think I need to have this long of a scion. I only need two or three buds. So, I think I'm going to save four buds <laughs> and then I'm going to cut it off right above a bud. Hold on. Okay, I'm going to cut this off right here above this bud. Technically, that's another sign that I could graft, but I don't have enough branches to graft everything. So I'm going to finish this by wrapping this around. Like that. Now you notice I am wrapping around the buds. Let's fold that over. And that's okay. The buds will break through. But actually, I think I only want to do one layer around the buds. And then I'm going to go around the buds and I'm going to go down. So I'm actually giving this a couple of layers. My biggest fear is that last year all of my scions dried out before I was able to, before they were able to grow. So I'm going to wrap this all the way down here. I have a, another piece of tape. I'm going to tape that on there. There we go. So that is all wrapped. Um, another thing that the guy on my video said is you could cover this whole thing with a, um, bubble wrap envelope, one of those pouches that you use to mail things and that have bubble in them because you can wrap it up and tape it at the bottom and that'll protect it. Uh, but I'm going to just stick with this for right now. Okay, let's move over to the other one. Okay, I'm going to basically do the same thing with this one. It's the same kind. It's one of those Fatima peaches. Here, I'll just do it aggressively. So that's just a little one. See there? Now we're going to turn this camera around and do the final graft. Okay, here we go. I'm going to do the same thing. Gently rocking it. It's very tender, so it can easily split too fast. Look how fast that's going. I'm barely putting any pressure on it there. And then this can go right down in there. There it goes. This one, the size matches a lot more than the other one. So I'm going to make sure that that is matching up as best as I can. There we go. And then I'm going to get some tape. Okay, whoops, oops. I'm going to put some electrical tape on there. Oh, I've got too much for this one. This one's tiny. I want to wrap it and kind of squeeze it at the same time so that it's holding that all together. That's good. All right, now I, I tried to do a little cheating there. I tried to leave a little tail open on the 
electrical tape so that when I put this right here, maybe it can be nice and hold it down for me. <laughs> okay, here we go. Now we're going to wrap this. Can you see the whole thing? Yeah. I'm going to wrap this up. Try and keep it snug. But I don't, I keep bumping, sorry. But I don't want to dislodge it. There we go. Got a handy dandy piece of tape to tape that there. There we go, all right. Two grabs done, yay, two. All right, so let me. You can see both of these graphs now, this one right here and this one right here. And the last thing I have to do is label them. These are both Fatima graphs, Fatima peaches, I'm sorry. So I'm going to label it with just a little paper label for now. If those two guys take, I will put a better label on them because I learned last year I didn't do a great label, it faded, and now I don't know what it is. So I'm going to have to get really good labels that don't fade with the uh, sun and all that good stuff. Okay, so that's it for now. I'm going to come back with you in a few minutes when I get to another um, graph that I think will be interesting for you to see. Okay, I've done a few more graphs, and now I'm on one that I, is a little bit wider, so I think I want to try a whip and tongue. And that is a fun graph to do, and I've done it a few times. Oh, the other thing I need to do is label how I did these graphs so I can know which ones worked. This one, you do a nice, uh, same kind of, cut on your scion, but, and maybe even a one on the back, I can't remember. That's fine. But then you also, the most important thing is you're going to make a little tongue right there. So I'm going to very gently rock right there to make a little tongue that sticks out. So here we go. Okay, do it again. It's a little better to do these on a little bit thicker wood. Okay, now I've got it in there pretty well. I'm doing it very gently so that I don't cut myself or cut down too far into the wood. But there we go. There's a little tongue. Can you see that kind of hanging off of there? Let's see if I could show it to you a little bit better. The little tongue is sticking off right there. There we go. Okay, now I gotta do the same thing on the branch. Okay, getting into these to be able to do it with the camera there is a little tricky. I put the camera in the best place. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't do that. Okay, so here we go. Let me see if I can get it from the other side. Yeah, I think I can do it better this way. I'm also trying to make it even. And again, I've matched up the sizes. of the branch and the scion so that they are very similar. Let's see how those would fit together. Let's see, do you see how one is kind of concave? They're both kind of concave. I need to kind of fix that a little bit. Well, that's a little better, let me see. Trying to match it up a little bit. Oh, I think once I get the tongue in there, that'll be fine. We'll see. Again, the goal is to match up the cambiums, and these are just different techniques to do that. So here we go. Please don't touch me. And 
don't know if you can even see this because my hand's probably in the way. So apologies for that. Slowly, patiently, so that you're not cutting too much. There. See that little tongue right there? I'm trying to pull it out of the pad. Now, let's see if these guys will fit together. You just got to slip in there together like that. Look at that. That's ah, not a perfect match, is it? Let me see if I can fix this one. Hold on. Okay, it's getting better. I think that's a little better. And when I tape it, I'm going to squeeze it. So, okay, now I'm just going to wrap it up. But I don't think you need to see that, so I will come back when I do another interesting one. So, some scions that I got uh, from the Scion Exchange do not need to be grafted. They are varieties of food that actually root very easily, and so I am going to just bury some sticks and see if they grow. The first ones I'm going to do are pomegranates. Let's see if I can find those pomegranates. Yeah, here we go. These, see if they have a specific name. Parf, parfunky, parfunka, <laughs> parfunka pomegranates. And I did have a pomegranate that I was trying to grow right here, but it died. It did not work. And so I'm going to try again with these little sticks. Now I've got two of them, and I want to experiment. I don't want to put them both just straight in the ground. I want to put one in the ground and one in a pot in case one of them doesn't work. So it's my way of hedging my bets. So this one I think I'm going to go ahead and put into the ground right here where I had that pomegranate. And before I actually put it into the ground, I'm going to put on it some rooting hormone. So, yeah, this looks like it's right. So each one of these little buds that are on here are really amazing because if they are above ground and get light and, and air and all of that, they become leaves. But if they're underground and they have all the moisture and the darkness of the ground, then they know to make roots. And so that's what I'm hoping. To give it a little help, I'm going to use some rooting powder, which is a special hormone that if you put on these little nubs, it will help them to root. So I'm going to try that. There we go. A couple of those have some rooting powder on them, just to give them a little bit of help. And so then I'm just going to put that end right down there in the ground, cover it up with all this great clay mud that we have around here and then I have some mulch i.e. dried leaves from the fall that I'm going to put around it oh and there's a worm yay oh that's a nice red one maybe that's a wiggler I'm going to put that down in there so that it can do its job there we go and now I'm going to keep an eye on it. Okay, it's not straight. I want it straight. There we go. <laughs> Let's make it straight. I want it nice. There we go. And now I'll keep an eye on it and see if in the spring it starts to leap out. And then this one I'll do the same thing. This one I'm going to put some rooting hormone on it. Down there on the bottom. Just to hopefully give it a little help. And then this pot has some regular clay dirt, but then on top it's got some compost. Which reminds me, I probably ought to put compost on this one too. Give it a fair shake. There we go. Now I'll water both of those and see if either one of them grow. Maybe both of them will grow, and then I'll have one I can give away. And then, uh, hold on, we're going to go do grapes too. Okay, here we are up here in my grape orchard. <laughs> they are all still sleeping for the winter. They 
haven't quite started to wake up. And I really do actually need to come out here and start pruning them. But I've got two scions of Suffolk grapes. And I am so excited about these grapes because they taste like cotton candy. They taste exactly like the cotton candy grapes you find in the store. They're so good. A friend of mine in the California Rare Fruit Group totally, totally gave these to me. And I'm so excited about them. So we're going to do the same thing. Let's find this one. Put some rooting hormone on there. There's just one bud right there. And we're going to put that right there in the ground. Cover it up. There we go. Give it some mulch. Give it a little mulch there. help and then I'll water it in a bit and then I've got one more same thing this one's weird it's got this little branch right here and so I think there's a bud right there so I'm gonna give that a little hormone again I want to do one in a pot see if I can get two or at least one of them over Stick that one down in there there we go good and let's see what happens in spring with these guys I'll let you know so now I'm up with my fig tree. I've done a couple of normal grafts onto it. Um, actually, I did a couple of the whipping tongues on there. I've been struggling with those, and so I'm practicing. But now um, I was going to try a new one, one that I haven't done before. And it's called a bud graft. Now I did one to practice before turning on the camera, but I'm gonna do another one to show you. And what it is, is taking a just a bud off of the branch, instead of using the entire branch, you take a bud off of the branch, branch and put it onto the stem or another branch or something like that so that it's just the bud grafted onto the rootstock, which is something I've never done before and it's tricky. But I looked up another great video that told me exactly how to do it and I'll share the link with you in the description. And um, so I did it once, I'm going to try it again, just to show you. So let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. So the first thing I need to do is to take off this bud. And I'm going to take off this bud right here. It already has growth coming out of it, but I'm going to cut that off when I'm done. And But first I'm going to take this bud off. I've already done one right here, so you can see where I did that. And now I'm going to do one here. And this is how she said to do it. Start about a quarter of an inch below the graft and do about a 45 degree angle cut, just a little bit, and then come above that bud and do the same thing, a bit of a quarter of an inch, and then slowly and carefully cut down to the other cut. There it goes. Let's see if I can find it. There it is. There we go. Now I've got it. She said to hold it by the leaf so that you're not touching the inside. I'm going to put that down for a second and then move the camera so you can see the next part. So the next thing that I do is to cut a small piece of bark out of the side of this branch or this trunk to match the bud that I cut out. And you can see this is the first one that I did right here. And then I'm going to put the other one up a little higher. Now I kind of screwed up on my videoing and so I've actually already cut that out and somehow the video didn't catch it. So here's where I cut out a small piece of the bark and I did it basically the same way. Cut a small piece, cut, cut a little thing in the bottom and then come up above where the bud would be. I measured it with the bud so I knew where it would go and then I cut down to this cut right here so that it came right out. And now what I'm going to do is take this bud, put it right in there and match up the cambiums as best I can and then wrap it in plastic. So I'll show you how I do that. Okay, I don't need a lot of plastic. 
But I do want to match up those cambiums, and of course, it's not exactly the same shape and size. So I'm going to kind of move it over to the side like that, and then I'm going to put the tape, the plastic, on really tight to hold that little guy in place, and also to keep moisture out of there and to keep moisture in. So you want the moisture that's in there to stay in there, but you don't want a bunch more moisture getting in there. There we go. And then she said to tie it, but I'm just going to tape it because that's what I've been doing. There we go. And then that little bud in a few weeks should start to grow and the graft will heal and it will and it will become part of the tree and so this is a new kind of fig it's an ego fig i-g-o and now i have two of them and i did them here because here let me zoom out so i did them on this side of the tree because that side of the tree doesn't have a lot of branches coming out of it. So most of the branches are coming out this way or that way. So if either of those buds grow, they'll come out this way, making it a little more even on the tree. And that's why I decided to do a bud graft. Also because I don't have a whole ton of branches, as you see. You could count these branches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's like seven branches and I didn't want to cut three or four of the branches of one fig just to put on another fig. So this will add to the tree, not just replace. Okay, let's see what else I'm going to do. And now for the one that I have been looking forward to for over a year. So this is my big old fruitless mulberry tree. It's super big and super old and it's great tree, but it doesn't have any fruit. And I learned last year at the Scion Exchange that I could graft a fruiting mulberry onto a fruitless mulberry and it should work. So when I had this guy pruned back in the fall, I made sure to tell the pruners to leave these three branches because these are the three branches I wanted to use for grafting. Um, I have six scions, uh, five different ones, but six scions of different mulberries that I got from the Scion Exchange this year. And so I'm gonna try something very unusual, certainly for me, and that is what, I, what they call a side graft. And that just means grafting it to the side of one of these guys and taping it up, maybe in a maybe in a whip and tongue, but then I want to be able to put two on each one. I'm going to try and put, I'm going to cut these off, and I'm going to try and put two on each one, see if I can do it. But let's start with just one, okay? And first I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these. Okay, I've cleaned my pruners again, every time. I'm going to cut these down pretty low to these. And again, the blade is towards the bottom. I'm going to cut these like right about there. That should still give me plenty of room to graft onto them. There's one. Okay, so now I got my three things that are going to hold my scions. And I've been learning to get everything prepared ahead of time so that I'm not having stuff in the middle. So I'm getting my black tape, my electrical tape ready. I'll just stick a few on here. Oh, hey, buddy! <laughs> Alex, you gonna help me? He loves to help. goes okay we are going to start with a black mulberry this one is one that I got from the 
group that came in with uh, UC Davis. Cut a bit off there on the end. And let's see what I can do. I'm going to start on this way. I'm going to go this way. So if I want this on here. Tongue on there, and then let's start over here. Okay. I want to make it so it's, it's about as wide as that. You can see that cambium layer. Right about, oh, that's right about as wide. Perfect. So let's go a little whip and tongue on this guy. Totally happy about that. Okay, I think I'm going to try and forego the whip and tongue. That is just complicating things. I'm going to try and just max this up. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there. I'm not going to wrap it all the way because I got the other side to do. Okay, so now I'm going to try and put a white Pakistani on the other side. Something tells me this ain't going to work well, but we're going to give it a try, right? I always got to give it a try. Go. Go. I like that one. This one here. Try and match that up as best I can. Okay, I think that's matching up pretty well. I'm gonna wrap these up. Whoops. Nice and tight. Well, we'll see, right? Let me put some plastic around those. All right, there's the last one. That one was a Tehama. I have an Easter egg mulberry, which was a UC Davis, a couple of Noir Spains right there on that one, and then I had the black mulberry there and a white Pakistan. And uh, yeah, it looks like Frankenstein now. <laughs> And uh, who knows if any of them will even work. I tried really hard, but it was very difficult. And so in a few weeks, we'll see if any of these work at all. And those were the last ones that, I, that I'm doing for this year. And so, um, oh, I also have been writing them down in my book. I still have to write these down. 
there are six here and so I've done about two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. I've done about thirty-one graphs this year. Wow, that's more than I've ever done and it's taken me a while. It's been actually a few days and so I'm very excited about that and we'll see how what my success rate is. I've been writing them down in this beautiful journal that my daughter gave me for Christmas, a garden journal. And so I've got a whole page now for this grafting project and a section for results to see how they work. So this year I'm trying to be smart, I'm trying to label everything really well, and I'm trying to um, keep notes of everything to make sure that you know I know what my success is, what works and what doesn't. Maybe if I'm having more success with one kind of graph than another, that sort of thing. So yeah, it's pretty exciting. Um, that is, and what it reminds me of is just being able to learn these really ins important skills because you never know what's going to happen, and you know the apocalypse comes or something, and we're going to need to know some skills like this just to be able to really have a diversity of fruits and foods to be available to us. And so that's been really important to me. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Come here. There he goes. And it's also really cool for me to be able to learn these things because I'm starting to see some of the um, science that goes behind it and some of the, the things that tell me how God does the work that he does. And it's all really very cool and very special, and I love it. So I'm very grateful that you guys join me and are learning along with me. Uh, remember to take a look at the uh, the YouTube videos that I put in the description to really understand from experts how to do grafting. For me, this is just bringing you along with my journey. And so thank you so much for joining me today. Take care and God bless.